Hello and welcome to the 15th video in this series making simple Flappy Robin for the iPhone and iPad using Cocos 2D. Last video then we introduced, let me find them here, the game over and re-enable after game over functions and that, that made things look a little bit cleaner with the Robin then sort of there being a pause once the Robin had died crashing into a tube or falling on the floor there was then a for enforced pause where the screen doesn't respond to touches before resetting the Robin to the middle of the screen and clearing off the tubes. I'm still working in this video by the way on the laptop so things might be a little bit scrappy like they were in the last video uh, with respect to seeing the code correctly and everything I noticed I cut some things off on the right hand side I'm sorry about that I will try and endeavor to make that a little bit better in this video and yeah so let's make things a little bit neater now and we'll put when the Robin actually dies we'll put a game over label up there during this sort of two second pause until the Robin is again um, reset to the middle of the screen and what we'll do is is when the Robin is waiting in the middle of the screen for the game to start they won't have another label there saying tap the screen to start so to do that we need a couple of labels so I'm just going to copy this score label and paste it twice and call one of them game over label and call the other one uh, press to start label and we're going to we could have made we're going to um, initialize these inside the initialization function inside the init function just where are we down here inside init and what I wanted to say just now was what we're basically going to do is we're going to take this code that we already have for the score label and copy it a couple of times and of course it's the lazy way of doing things really you would actually want a create label function probably in a separate library or something I talked about this in the Cocos 2DX series where you simply send in the text, the font size, the color you might want or something and that returns then a pointer to your label rather than having the code repeated like this but to keep things a bit shorter in this series we're just going to brutally copy and paste some code so the first one will be then for the game over label so I want the game over label and I'm aware that's gone off the screen slightly here I'll just actually let's uh, squash all this up a little bit here so we want first of all the text to actually be obviously game over let's put an exclamation mark as well marker felt we're using the score font size that we had we don't need to set the anchor point because we want the game over label to be in the middle of the screen and that means of course we're going to have it positioned the y will be screen size dot height divided by two and the width of course will be screen size dot width divided by two like so we want it still to be red and of course I mustn't forget to copy and paste in game over label here and it gets added like so. The other thing we want to do with the game over label is set the visibility to no. So when the game first starts up we don't want this label obviously to be visible. I'm going to take this code then these lines here and just take these three lines here and copy them and just drop that below in here and I need this fourth line here and this will be the press to start label so the press to start label and we'll just say uh, tap screen to start let's say tap screen to start I hope that doesn't run off your screen when you're watching this because I'm trying to estimate how wide it is for the laptop so press to start label then exactly the same font exactly the same position and exactly the same color and the thing is is we won't set the visibility to no because we actually want this to be visible when the app starts up. Okay, so that's the labels added one visible, one not. Now we need to get these visibilities working properly. So where we go then into the game over function here, when the game is actually over, what we want to do is we want to set our game over label to the visibility obviously to yes, we actually want this label to be visible and then when we enable after game over is called where we can tap the screen and restart we'll actually remove our label or set its visibility back to no so that the label disappears so we don't have game over sitting visible in the middle of the screen and the other thing we need to do of course is when we're re-enabling after game over we'll want to be able to see our press to start label so we'll set the visibility of that to yes because we want to be able to see the instruction tap the screen to start but we also need somewhere to set the visibility of this obviously to no and we'll do that in the start game the call to start game that's actually made when the robin is tapped or the screen is tapped to start the game going so we'll set that 
to know. So all being well, that should be all we need to do to actually get things running a little bit neater. And you can see that we've now got tap screen to start. It's a little bit unfortunate actually that the robin is right in the way of the T there. That doesn't match very well. I tell you what, let's uh, stop that and let's just try and very quickly fiddle with the position if we can um, of the label here inside the initialization function. Where are we then? Of both of these here. So the moment we have a screen size dot height divided by two, let's go two thirds of the way up the screen shall we so uh, let's go multiply by 2 divided by 3 like so and maybe then that will just uh, move it up the screen a little bit and make it a little not quite clash with the robin in that way because that wasn't so nice so we'll just put that in there and just run this again okay a little bit better so we've got tap screen to start there so now when I tap it disappears and then when we die it should say game over as you can see here and then tap screen to start and in fact just one more little neatening thing let's actually make this divided by two for the game over because the robin more than likely won't clash with it anyway so I just do this again so tap the screen to start working now and then let's let the robin fall off the bottom of the screen and now we have the game over like so and the tap screen to start Good, so the effect of the last couple of videos really is, there's not very much complicated code in there, but the, the overall effect is is that it's, uh, it's made the game a hell of a lot neater just by adding these simple labels in here with a bit of instruction and also enforcing a pause before the game then gets uh, restarted by calling the, or the being able to detect touches gets reset by calling this re-enable to game over with the function with the set user interaction into enable, uh, enable to yes. Good, so that's it for this one then. In the next one we're going to start thinking about saving our settings and maybe looking at adjusting the volume of the sound effects and the music and also saving a high score and then showing a high score label on the screen. So plenty to do and thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one.